Hey guys, this is Tesla Talks. Thanks for tuning in. We have a new update. This is a 2021.36.5.5. Once again, a number with a lot of different numbers in it. Uh, but basically, 2021 is the year, 36 is the month, and 5.5 .5 is just the dots the the revisions that they did in it uh, and you know what this came with a, a lot of improvements a lot of people say see first of all because i was on 2021.3210 so basically anything that that was in 36 and 36.55 it all comes in and people the first thing they see is the cold weather improvements let's start there and people see the cold weather improvements and at least this year this has been <laughs> made a lot fun of because it seemed like we were every little update that we were getting because we didn't i don't know about you but uh I, I think we've had this debate it seems like we haven't had tons of uh updates to begin with this year compared to the previous other years now whether that has to do with uh concentration on the beta or or other things i don't know that's debatable but uh the small amount of updates we did get throughout the year that trickled in especially early part of the year into into summer were a lot of cold weather improvements and uh uh, ended up being the butt of a lot of jokes saying, you know what, oh, that's great that we're getting cold weather improvements in June and August and stuff like that. Not to say those are the exact months we got it, but you know you know what I'm saying. But you know what, they actually bring a lot of um, needed, at least here in southern Ontario, I, I live in Canada, and I know a lot of people even in the states, uh, northern parts of the states, uh, they have cold weather, like wintry weather. So these uh, improvements actually do help and, and do improve a lot of things. So they say right in the... In the release notes here that you know they've been uh, made to improve your vehicle experience in cold weather when you navigate now to a supercharger improved battery preconditioning delivers a faster charge so right off the bat that if they tweak that a little bit and change that that's a good thing um, improved temperature consistency throughout the cabin offer more comfort uh, comfort in cold weather i mean i've just preheated this to make this video and it's uh as you can see seven degrees celsius out so it's nice and toasty and warm in here and what i noticed uh, tell me if this is new folks after i did it, i did it from the app and when the cabin temperature was properly uh, at the right temperature i got this notice on my phone it says your car cabin is now at the desired temperature i've never seen that before let me know down in the comments below if this is old this is something i just have uh, been missing for the last few months or if this is new i'm pretty sure it's new so little things like that that, that, that makes a big difference and then um the uh, something that I, I think they talked about, whether it was in one of the uh, press conferences or one of the uh, earnings calls or something, like that, they talked about um, uh, cold weather improvements. The windshield wipers uh, wash sequence now automatically adjusts to your vehicle speed to better clear salt and grime. Once again, this is one of these wintry uh, improvements. So any kind of improvement where we can uh, have the wipers come on and the washer fluid come on to clear salt and grime is a great thing. Does that have anything to do with it being tied into uh, camera only vision based autopilot and stuff like that? Probably because, you know, uh, as we know, autopilot and the beta is all concentrating now fully on the cameras and not using any radar. So I suspect it probably has a lot to do with that, but it's a, a good improvement and well needed, I, in my opinion. Moving right on to the safety part of this, and there's always safety, We whether they announce it in, in the the release notes or in the background in the little tweaks there's always safety improvements with all the updates folks so this is the airbag system improvements and once again i think elon touched on this in one of the earnings calls or something like that previously in the last couple ones it says based on recent fleet data analysis we enhance your vehicle's restraint airbag system ability to detect and respond to an even wider range of real world side impact collisions so as you can see it's it's making the car that as we know the three and the y and, and even the s and x are the safest cars in his class safest cars in the world now just making them more safe so the airbags now like elon said now they can detect uh who's in the car where they're positioned towards the steering wheel or towards the back in terms of seat position uh where the back rest is and stuff like that the weight of the person that's in the car all that kind of stuff that they can use to when when and if they need to trigger the airbag, trigger it in a better way other than just like 
setting it off in general, right? I mean, other car manufacturers have, have been doing this for a while. Tesla's also been doing it, but now they're kicking it up a notch and they're doing it even better than the regular OEMs, which can be a bad thing. And then, um, that, so that, those two things were in 2021.36. And then the dot five came the much needed, in my opinion, mobile app improvements. Now you can adjust to charge current, scheduled departure, or scheduled charging at your car's current location from the Tesla app. This is awesome. Now, of course, you need version 4.1.0. So if we look at the app for a second here, and we can see the changes that they made. Now, as you can see, if you look at the icon of the car itself, um, now, I know it used to be red when you go into the climate, actual right into the climate, that part was always red uh, when it's heating up and stuff like that. That When I say always, in the last probably couple updates of the app, that's great to see and, and that works really, really good. Down in the bottom, you can see it says uh, 6 a.m. So it's just reminding you that that's when it's gonna do the preheating and the scheduled departure. And then if we come back out of there, uh, what is new that I don't think they had before was red on the windshield in, in the icon of the car there. And now if you looked carefully in the other versions of the car you can always see the air flowing and it was always in a, like a gray or a white airflow now it's actually showing red that's a new cool little improvement and the big improvement is if you scroll down now to where it says scheduled now it says right on it says car will charge during off-peak hours and preconditioned by 6 a.m now if you click on it it opens up a whole new window here that we never had before so now in the top left you can choose on departure or on the right you can choose charge and if you choose charge you can enable scheduling by charge at certain times uh, of the morning whenever you want so as you can see you can you can set the time to whenever you want it uh, to start charging and that's just the you know the schedule charging now if you go back to departure that seems to be where the, be the best thing is so now at the top you can choose the schedule departure just like uh, you can do with the charge and now you can charge now you can choose uh, the climate for whether you want to precondition the battery and the uh, cabin by turning that on or off there. And now you can choose weekdays or weekends. So basically anything you could have done with the car, in the car itself, now you can do on the app, which is great because now, I, I don't know about you, but I've been in so many situations where I've had to actually go out to the car to change it for the next morning when I'm getting ready to go to work and I don't have to leave for work till later or I have to go in earlier or something like that. And I've always had to go in the car and do it. Now you can do it all on the app and it saves a lot of time. So it's a great, great feature. And it's awesome to see that they've listened to what we've we've asked them to do. That's that's a good, great thing with Tesla, right? Little things that we ask them to do, they actually do. It may take forever, in some people's opinion, like months and months, but they eventually will get around to it and they will do it. Now let's go for a quick drive and see if we notice anything different with autopilot. Uh, we'll wait till we get on a bigger street here and engage autopilot and see if we notice anything. Uh, I mean, a lot of times in these updates, the autopilot and FSD stuff is in the background and you can't really see it. So we may not be able to tell. Uh, definitely there was no uh, release notes on, on any improvements, but you know, usually there is. So engage autopilot here. Everything, like I said, everything else looks the same. Nothing looks different. Um, yeah, autopilot seems to be working fine. Um, in a situation like this, uh, what we want to see is if it engages any uh, longer or, or quicker or anything like that, how the stopping distance is, if it's uh, abruptly stopping um, worse than it used to be because, you know, some of the stops that have been pretty abrupt in, in general, but we want to see if it's any smoother or any uh, more abrupt. Now, I just have, this is just regular autopilot with um, no radar. It's vision only, one of the newer cars. So we engage it again. Now we come around the corner. So it says keep your hand on the wheel and... Uh, and be prepared to take over at any time. That's normal, that's always been there. Can we adjust? Nope, we can't adjust it anymore, just like normal. Can't adjust it any more than we used to. Car's turning in front of us, it's gonna heavily break. Yep. It broke there, no, no message came on the screen I noticed there, but uh, we did have the audible chime. That, that I've never seen before. As you can see on the map, our beautiful uh, Great Lakes here in Southern Ontario. Anyone from a different part of the country or um, continent, maybe you don't know about our Great Lakes. We have some awesome Great Lakes around here. And you can see them if you uh, visit my 
camping channel that we where we go outdoors and, and uh, camping and stuff like that. Outdoor Canucks, check it out. It's a shameless little plug. <laughs> Uh, as we continue, okay, we're going to go up to speed here and see what happens when we get up to this uh, dump truck. Let me actually come out of all of uh, get closer to this dump truck. Exceed the speed limit, because that's the type of person I am sometimes, and I'll engage it and see if it depicts anything different, if it does any different behaviors. Seems to be working fine. I don't like being behind dump trucks. It makes me nervous, especially when uh, they're throwing off stuff and debris and messing up your car so we will get away from the dump truck come back down here into another small residential street now there's one part of this residential street that has a nice tight 90 degree turn and I've taken it in autopilot with different versions of autopilot and it's always reacted differently in every different version uh, last few versions it's been really really good um, it takes it a little bit too fast sometimes but it handles it pretty good either way. And I want to see how it does it this time with the new update, see if there's any difference. So we engage it. It's a 40 zone here because it's around school and school's already started. So I don't in, uh, advise you to use autopilot around schools if you're not paying attention. I should always pay attention around schools anyways. But here it's coming up. It's a nice wide corner. It slows down from 50 to 45. It takes the corner nice and fast. And, uh, wow, you know what, that's good. A lot of times, and it comes up the red light and I don't have, or the stoplight, and I don't have the uh, FSD to, to stop. But a lot of times it's actually taking the corner so fast that it goes over the right-hand side where the, the uh, white lines is, and it's gone over it a few times into that long bike lane. So this time it didn't, which is good to see. So that's it, just a little quick test on uh, uh, autopilot to see if anything is different. I know it wasn't long enough. Uh, throughout the days, I'll, I'll, I'll monitor it, see if I notice anything different, and I'll uh, make a video if there is enough to warrant a video, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Anyways, folks, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in, and we will catch you later. Take care. Bye-bye.